Download the files from the place where you bought the add-on. You should see three files. A text file containing installation and license information. A file needed for managing the catalogs in the asset browser. And a Blender file. Place these three files in a location on your hard drive where you also store your other Blender asset libraries. If you don't have such a folder on your hard drive, just put it somewhere safe where you put all your 3D models for later use. You can even create a separate folder for it and name it The Roads Must Roll, like I'm doing here. Open the Blender file. All objects are already marked as assets. The only thing you need to do is click on Edit in the top left menu. And then at the bottom click on Preferences. In the Preferences menu, click on File Paths at the bottom. Now click on the plus icon and select the folder where you previously placed the files. Click on Add Asset Library at the bottom. You can then choose from three different import methods. I highly recommend choosing Append Reuse Data. Click on the three horizontal lines at the bottom left of the window and click on Save Preferences. Close the Preferences window. To keep the size of your project files small in the future, in the top menu, go to File, External Data, Unpack Resources, and select Write Files to Current Directory, Overwrite Existing Files. This will create a Textures folder in the same location where you originally saved your files. All textures will be placed inside this folder, ensuring that every future project references them from there. This significantly reduces file sizes. Go to File in the top left menu in the header and click on Save to save your file. Now we can use the asset library we have saved in any Blender file we work on on our computer. Let's put it to the test. Go to File in the top left and choose New and then General. The layout of the interface of this new file depends on what you have set as the default startup file. As a beginner, it took me a long time to understand this. But in Blender, you can change any window into any other type of window you want. Go to the icon in the top left of a window and choose Asset Browser. On the left side of that window, you can see a side panel listing all the catalogs. If you can't see this, press the T key while hovering with your cursor over the window. Select the Roads Must Roll from the list. Now you see all the thumbnails of the different assets contained in the Roads Must Roll. If you hold your cursor over a thumbnail, you'll see a more detailed description appear of what the asset does. The only thing you need to do to import an asset into your scene is to drag the thumbnail into the 3D viewport. You can find all the settings for each asset in the Modifier tab within the Properties window. These settings are organized into several panels that you can expand or collapse as needed. Starting from version 1.4 of the Roads Must Roll, all traffic-related settings are grouped into a separate modifier, which works just like the others. In the future, I might even add more modifiers for new features. Please note, do not change the order of the modifiers. If you do, the system will no longer work correctly. But how do you modify the curve of an asset? It's really simple. Select the object. Then, press the Tab key. Now, you can manipulate the control points of the curve by grabbing, rotating and resizing them. You can also make the curve go up and down. A quick tip. When you drag an asset into your scene for the first time, you will see that a number of collections have been created in the outliner. You can collapse these by hovering your cursor over the outliner and pressing the minus key on your keyboard. A quick note on handling duplicates. 
When you drag various assets into your scene, you'll notice that Blender creates a duplicate of each referenced object in the outliner. However, these duplicates are instances, so they shouldn't significantly increase your file size. One issue, though, is that Blender doesn't create instances of the node trees. So, for now, here's what I recommend. Drag each asset into your 3D viewport only once. If you need to use an additional asset of the same type, simply copy the existing one in your scene using the shortcut Shift plus D. For example, if you've already imported the main road modifier into your scene and want to create a few more, select the road. Press Shift and D on your keyboard. Place the copy wherever you like. You can repeat this as many times as you need. This way, the modifier will remain an instance. Of course, you can also use the link import method, but you need to know what you're doing. This method has its own advantages and disadvantages. It is important to know that you need to take an extra step when importing the preset intersections. These preset traffic junctions have a different type of thumbnail, as you can see here. The preset intersections are collections, and if you just drag them into your 3D viewport, you won't be able to edit the individual parts. No matter where I click, it always selects the entire collection. Here's what you need to do. Let's start again and drag the preset into your scene. You will see a collapse pop-up window appear in the bottom left with the title Add Collection. It's not very visible, so look carefully. Click this open and uncheck the Instance checkbox at the bottom. The collection will now automatically be moved back to the center of your scene. And now you can select and edit all the individual parts. If you're using an older version of the Roads Must Roll and want to update, you can do so in just three simple steps. Just follow the step-by-step -step guide on my website. The link is in the description. Have fun with it, and feel free to let me know what new features you'd like to see in the Roads Must Roll. You'll find a link to a survey in the description. Also, check out this video for some useful tips and tricks.